Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to another Lumber Tycoon 2 video. I am building more onto my ramp, onto my bridge of awesomeness, because that seems to be like the only thing that I can think to do. <laughs> There's tons to be done. I mean, you can take a ride on the ferry, go over to the the um, logic store, pick up some logic, and, and build all kinds of circuits and electronics, and basically a lot of different things. Um, I don't know that I've done a circuit video in quite some time. I haven't needed them for any reason. Um, I mean, the space door, that's kind of cool. We, uh, we showed that one off a while back. Um, other than that, I mean, we've just been hunkered down inside the house, um, not going outside. We are officially in um, stay home mode, which I'm sure all of America pretty much is at this point. Um, I do want to address something and it bugged the poop out of me a second ago. Um, well, not a second ago. Yesterday, I went up to the store to get, um, what was it? We were out of bananas and uh, I needed to pick up Subway sandwiches. So Subway is um, carry out only, delivery only. And that's, that's perfect, that's good. Uh, that means people aren't coming into the store, they aren't spreading germs and whatnot, right? So that is a good thing. But everyone else, whoa, everyone else that was inside the store had their hands all over everything, <laughs> touching everything, and I was paranoid. Like, I don't normally get like paranoid paranoid, but I got paranoid because the, I touched the screen to, to make my purchase. Um, the thing that you get your, um, that you wrap the bananas in, the little plastic bag thingy, um, it has a little turner on it. I had to touch the turner, um, the credit card machine. I had to touch the pad of the credit card machine. And then I went in over to, um, and they, they look like they were trying. I mean, it looked like Walmart had um, people out with carts and they were wiping things down, but it didn't negate the fact that I had five other people who had gone in line in front of me and touched the screen before I did. And none of them used hand sanitizer. They were touching their face and everything else. And I just, I get, became very aware of like how many people are not practicing social distancing. And I probably myself should not have been out in the store, but at the same time we needed bananas. So, I mean, that's one of the things that you can do is you can go and get groceries. People were standing all over the place, really close to each other and just paranoid me big time. And I'm a paranoid guy in the first place. I mean, there's, there's not too much that, uh, like I don't take precautions to, but that, that really did open my eyes. I was like, Ugh, ooh, ooh, mm. not sure that I like that at all. The other thing was, um, the hand sanitizer. Okay. So when I, I, I reached up to go hit a squirt of the hand sanitizer stuff and it was out. And that's when I realized how many other people reached up and touched that hand sanitizer and it was out and they didn't get it and they then spread the germs to their hands that they just touched. Hmm. You know, there's just... Be mindful of what you're touching and where you're at and who you're around. If you do have to go out. If you don't have to go out, do not go out. And, you know, public service announcement from Code Primate, who is absolutely paranoid about germs and, and bugs and viruses. <sighs> and I mean, we're, we're a pretty clean family. We wash our hands, we take baths every day, we, we wash down the, the surfaces of everything we touch. I mean, when I get home from work, I change out of my work clothes to switch into like day clothes and I don't, I don't go walking around the house in the clothes. I used to have to be really mindful of that, especially inside the jail. Oh, oh, for, <laughs> hold on. That was out of context for people who don't know me. 
Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, um, I spent nine years in jail. Mm -hmm. Nine years in jail. I know, half of you are like, <gasps> No, I was a correctional officer. Um, I was in for four years in the Marine Corps as a 5831 military police correctional specialist. So I, uh, I was a brig guard. And then uh, I did uh, five years in, um, in county jail, Green County. So I was a, I was a jailer. I was a CO. Yo, yo, CO. Yo, yo. So, got a little bit of street cred, you know? It's whatever. It's cool. I, I haven't always been a great big dork. <laughs> no, that's true. I, I've always been a great big dork. It just, you know, changed form, military and, and police, stuff like that. So, am I recording the sound? Yeah, I'm recording the sound. So, um, we had to practice during those times of, like, just practicing social distancing not touching your face and in the military that's huge you do not touch your face I guess I don't need to open that one because I've got some doors over here but I do need to open this one basically we're just gonna flip flop this and switch it switch sides Uh, oh, also, for those of you that don't know what I'm doing, there is a one unit gap in between these two doors. So this door and this door are, are merged by one. So if you watch, when this handle closes, it's going to be lined up kind of with this one, just like that, see? And then when this reloads, uh, it will actually attach where the handles are. It's the handles that attach. A lot of people didn't know that. Oh, oh no, no! We're not going all the way down. Not this time. Not this time, doors. I mean, we got knocked down a little bit. Anyhow, whenever we were inside the jail, um, there was another pandemic that flashed through um, the world. And it was the, I think it was the swine flu. Uh, at that time, we were practicing social distancing and, and practices then too. Because I mean, when you work inside a jail, everybody's coming in off the streets. You don't know if they, they've got fevers or, or what kids I mean they're you're a jailer you don't you're not checking for medical stuff and if there's somebody that's in medical distress then you call medical to like bring them um, whatever they need then but I mean that's that's when you're doing the medical intake and most of the time you're you're more worried if uh, somebody has any like serious psychological or uh, health problems you know something that might uh, compromise them from being inside jail and having a compromised immune system is one of those things if somebody is going through chemo treatments we normally don't keep those people overnight I mean we we will usually get them a judge and released pretty fast um, it doesn't mean that you're out scot-free you are issued a, a date that you have to go to court and stuff like that. And a lot of people are like, oh, if the police arrest you, you go straight to jail. Well, technically, it depends on what it is. If you get arrested for something that's a serious crime, all right, most misdemeanors are not serious crimes. Um, like moving violations, non-misdemeanor non traffic violations, stuff like that, you're not going to jail. Not unless you're a complete jerk and you're harassing the cop and, and doing something that you're not supposed to. And then most likely the cop's just going to be a jerk and take you to jail anyway, just because, I mean, he's, you know, he could arrest you or he doesn't have to arrest you. It's your choice. I mean, just be nice to cops, you know? And I'm going to say this with the most humblest of humbles in my voice. Most cops are nice. Okay, they didn't get into law enforcement to go harass people. They didn't get into law enforcement because they hate people. They got into law enforcement because they want to help you. They want to make a difference. They want to be the heroes and save the day and do the good things. Like, that's why cops get into it. Alright, it's not because they want to be jerks. Okay? There is, there's been many a times that I've been out and about walking around and I've had former inmates come up to me and go, uh, CEO Haskins, 
dude, you were like one of the coolest cops in there. I'm like, yeah, cool, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I hope I made a difference in your life. I hope that uh, you have changed. And I ask him, how's it going? Like, ha have you been to all your court dates? Have your are you off parole? What are, what are you doing now? You know. And I'm genuinely interested in how somebody has bettered themselves. And that's that is always. I mean, <clears throat> my my wife said it to me tonight, and I didn't really it didn't really sink in. That I do that. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be a little conceited, of course. I took photos while I was out in um, uh, where did I go? Massachusetts, out in Boston. And one of the mornings, I went and took uh, a breakfast. I, I got breakfast at this just little shop that was on the street that I was on. And it's called like the tea house or the, the tea something. I forget the actual name of it. I will probably post a link for you guys down in the description, but I mean, it was just this little hole in the wall diner that looked like it was family owned, maybe, uh, by some Italians. And, and it just, it looked like a really nice place to go and have a breakfast or something. And being in Boston, all right, they have fish markets all over the place. I wanted some fresh fish or something. So I actually got like fresh tuna and I got it myself a tuna fish sandwich. You can get tuna like all the time. You can get tuna pretty much anywhere and it's it's always the same, you know, but this particular place, it was a really good tuna sandwich and they, they like toasted the bread and they gave me mayonnaise and, and lettuce and tomato and, and just, it was really good. So um, after I got finished, right? I looked at the place, I looked at the place, uh, like the, the reviews and stuff, and it was, you know, average kind of thing. And I asked the people behind the counter, I'm like, do you mind if I take your picture? This is my first time in Boston. This is a really good place. I haven't had fish the, the fish in, in Boston before. Would you mind if I took your pictures? And I had them all like come in and stand. And I was like, one, two, three, cheese, took the picture. And then when I was outside, I took a picture of the store and I posted it to Google Photos and said, five stars, really nice place to eat. I really like the tuna fish sandwich. Thank you guys so much for the great experience. And I'll be darn, I got a message the other day that saying that like over 19,000 people have enjoyed my photo and my review of the place. So that's a big statement, you know, that's, whoa, I did not think at the time that wasn't what I was going for. I really enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the people that were there and I just, I wanted to post that and share it. I didn't realize it was going to blow up, but it was very cool, you know? And I think that's, that's the purpose. I don't want, I don't do YouTube for the views. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I like the attention that I get as being a YouTube star <laughs> and there's no denying it anymore. I used to think, no, 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 I'm not a real YouTuber. I'm just, I just make videos. That's all, you know, I'm just having fun. There's no denying it. I am a YouTube star and I need to. Uh, I, I realized that I'm not doing it for the fame. I'm not doing it for like the recognition of being a YouTuber. In fact, I find it very tacky if I'm in a crowd of people and I'm like, I have a 115,000 subscribers on YouTube. It just, it makes me feel like, Ugh, really you use that as your go-to line. I mean, when you think in the grand scheme of my life of what has happened and what I've accomplished and what I've achieved, that's just one section. There's so much more that I've done and I did not realize it. I'm not going for the recognition. I don't care about the recognition. It's nice, but I mean, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to uplift you. I'm here for you to better yourself and for you to become whoever you're going to be. And if you're already grown up, I'm here to motivate you to keep going. If you're a parent, good job. I mean, you've, you've gotten to a place where you know the pains of what you did to your parents. <laughs> and kids are going, what are they talking about? No, I'm serious. The stuff that I used to pull on my parents, the stuff I used to say, 
my daughter is she is folding it back tenfold for me and i think to myself i never used to talk to my parents that way and then i think about it i'm like wait maybe i did and this is like payback and now that i think back to it my mom said that to me she said you know what you're gonna grow up and you're gonna have kids and they're gonna say that same stuff to you and i was like whatever i'm never having kids i'm not growing up are you kidding me yeah it happened <laughs> i grew up mama <laughs> anyhow i uh i just i want to make sure that that you understand i'm not doing it for the fame i really don't care if i have a hundred thousand subscribers my goal was 500 and that was it if i got to 500 i was going to make a special and i was going to hurrah and say I did it. I I made it to 500 subs. Good job, me. But it kept going, and it's still going. Sorry, I'm talking about myself again. I hope if you want to go make YouTube videos, if you're a parent, and you're looking for something to do, gosh, <sighs> go find yourself a game that helps you relax and helps you like get out of the daily. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, or whether you're a construction worker, or whether you're an accountant, whatever the case may be. If you're, and by the way, I was talking about moms being the construction workers. Dad's chauvinistic. Seriously? I wasn't talking about men construction workers. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Occupations don't have any sex anymore. Like, it, you can be pretty much anyone, anywhere, doing anything. And it's normal. So, there used to be a, a riddle, um, what was it? <clears throat> There's a, oh, oh, I remember. There's a dad and a boy who are in an accident. They're rushed off to do two different hospitals. The doctor rushes in to work on the boy and stops and says, I can't work on him. He is my son. And that's supposed to be the riddle. And it's not until later that you realize that the doctor is his mom. Now, if that riddle actually got you and you're like, oh, dang, I forgot. Throw that down in the comments down below. Be like, got me. If it didn't, I mean, that's, that's an old riddle. But for the time that I grew up back in high school, that got a lot of people. They're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. You don't have to be a, a man to be a doctor. Sorry, where is this conversation going? I have I have no clue. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I was, what was I starting on? Hmm. Hmm. Recognition. I I like the attention. I really do. But I'm not in it for the attention. And I don't. I don't want to be Markiplier. I don't want to be Jacksepticeye. I don't want to be PewDiePie. To be those guys means I would have to struggle to stay on top, to stay relevant, to have the best content out there. And I really don't... Hi, buddy. Next time, nice guys. Hi. I, I really don't want to have to, like, fight for first place. If I come in second or third, I'm I'm absolutely okay with that. You might not want to stand there, bud. I'm uh, I'm moving the platforms up. Code, why are you moving the platforms up? Because it's it's time to move up. Oh no! Hit B. I did it. That's okay. We can start down here. I mean, I've I've got a nice little platform up there. And we can just keep going with some more doors. Uh, I'm going to need ladders, aren't I? So let's do let's do ladders first, and then we'll go with uh, go with doors. While I'm sitting here talking and just having fun, hanging out. Boop, boop. So are you trying to blow up stuff? Hmm. I think that guy was trying to blow up stuff on my base. But we all know that Defaultio put a, a bug in there. Or he put a, a safety switch. 
that says you cannot blow up when in close proximity to other people's properties. Stuff like that. Why false? Did, did you really just... What's this guy's name? Converse number one. Nice base. Thank you. Appreciate it. See, and and this is what happens when I play on public servers. <sighs> There's a bunch of comments over there in the in the talkie section. I'm not going to chat today. I'm I'm just having fun and kind of relaxing. I um uh, I have been doing this RPA programming stuff, right? The the robots and I am very much into those. I've been doing extra classes offline. Like, uh, sorry, not during normal business hours when I'm supposed to be doing them. I, I still work on the, the programs and stuff, but I've been doing the training like after hours and on my extra time. Every, every moment I, excuse me, excuse me, stop, stop, dude. Okay, I'm sorry. You're just a little too excitable. Bye, dude. He's jumping on stuff. I know it's exciting, but you're you're going to glitch out my my stuff here. Oh gosh. There we go. Do do do. In the long run, I hope even if I'm not helping people, if I help at least one person, you know, if that one person changes or remembers me when they grow up and they're like, dude, I used to watch this guy whenever I was little and he used to tell me like my ADHD is a gift, not uh, something to be looked down upon. Or he told me that my autism wouldn't affect uh, my outcome of being, excuse me, dude. Excuse me. Outcome of being who I am when I grow up. You know? It's very much a part of who you are. And I don't want anybody to ever feel like they have to change or they have to fix it. Because it's not something to be fixed. Okay? Whether you have autism, Down syndrome, Asperger's, uh, any kind of mental illness. Okay? It's just not true. You don't have to fix something like that. Now... I know with my ADHD, I do take medication and I take medication to kind of help me concentrate throughout the day. And it's more for those around me, not really for myself, especially in like my work situation. Whenever I'm working, I tend to just, oh, I love your vids. Thank you. I almost chopped your foot off. <laughs> I, uh, Hold on, is he like standing in the way? Is that why I can't chop it? Or is it a lag spike? I think it might be a lag spike, hold on. Yeah, it was a lag spike. It cut. Oh, excuse me. Um, by the way, I haven't been programming and I'll show you, I'll show you what I've been doing here towards the end of the video. And I kind of wanted to do it just to test to see if uh, if the song is copywritten or not. And if it is, then I'll know that I need to go and change the music. But I've been working on basically a, a Super Bomberman remake kind of thing for Roblox. For those of you that have seen it, awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, we're gonna, we're gonna go show you. And it's going to be amazing. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually just here. We've only got about five minutes left, so I'll jump out and go straight over there. So let's do this. Go to home. <clears throat> now, hopefully the music is not copywritten. Um, do, 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 do. Can I show this? I can show this part, right? Where is Roblox Studio scene? There we go. 
cut this over. So this right here, it's called Roblox Bomber or Roblox Bombers. I probably should change the name of that to Roblox Bomber, but um, I will play it and show you what I've done so far. Cut. Here we go. And play. So far, there's been 74 visits. <laughs> people, people see me in studio and they're like, "Oh, he's gonna make a new game." Oh, he's making my lumber. Oh. Anyhow, I'm going to add a scoreboard over there on the left-hand side. I'm going to make it where it's on teams. You only get one chance. Uh, there's going to be dirt blocks in the center where you can actually blow those up, and that will reveal where the power-ups are. And then uh, should uh, should be pretty good. I want to make it as close to Super Bomberman 2 as I can. So there will be power-ups, and I will give you the ability to, like, you'll have a max of 5. Right now, I make, made it the max of, like, 10. Oh, I died. I'm gonna have to figure out that little lag thing there. That was, that's kind of crazy. Hold on, can I turn the graphics way down? What happens if I turn the graphics off? Whoa. Whoa. Okay, that was a little crazy. Oh, I got you. I got you. Oh, almost got you. Oh yeah, that's a that's a lag spike. We'll we'll have to figure that one out. Anyhow, <clears throat> I hope the sound was not copywritten. We'll just we'll see. Um, the sound, the music is by this guy named Arsenic nineteen eighty seven. I will go over to YouTube and give him a huge shout out because I believe he deserves it. So let's go over here. Uh, let's see. Right here. Fade, 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 fade. So down in the description down below, go check out Arsenic1987. He makes a ton of remaked video game mixes and stuff like that. I asked him personally, I said, dude, can, you, can I take this music and use it in a video game? And I will actually show you that. Let's go over to his videos, scroll all the way down, Super Bomberman, right here. Anyhow, he remixed this song, and if you look down here, dude, I messaged you last month trying to get a hold of you, love the music, would love to use this song in my videos, tweet me, at Code Primate. And he wrote back, I'm not much of a Twitter, but hey, I'll be around, I guess, uh, I read the comments. And then I said, Arsenic, uh, cool, I tried to message you, it wouldn't let me send, hmm, I'll get it figured out. Uh, and then, well, I made a Twitter account, so I guess you can do at Twitter, at Arsenic1987. So, to everyone out there who's watching right now, please go sub to him. He's only got 9,000, oh wait, no, he's only got 7,000 subscribers, and he's been doing this awesome music for a while. I highly recommend go check out some of his music, subscribe to his channel, do some awesomeness.
stuff like that. Uh, Wizard of War HD. This one's this one's pretty good. Hold on, where's the sound? Okay, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, enough with the awesome music. I will, uh, wait, is this another one? Oh yeah, that's another one. Oh gosh. I'm not, I'm not gonna do all of them because he's too awesome. Anyhow, thank you everyone for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos, but it's your choice. Why is this thing? That's because my graphics were down, isn't it? All right, let's turn the graphics back up. There we go. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love... Oh, 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 come on, come on. Oh, I got you. I got you. Oh, no, 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 he got out. Oh, good job. Good job. All right. Love you guys very much. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you very soon. Outro.